Okay, so as we're in the signal diagram, we notice always the signal starts from the source. Here it's going to go through a filter of all. And we have placed the amplitude out into a limiter that says if it's over 10 microvolts, then turn it on. That way that we can just have everything turned on here. We have this bank, which is the binaural beats, and this bank, which is the monaural beats. In the top bank here, I'm opening the properties, and you can see that I have placed a 110 hertz into the left channel. So that's a frequency, right? A sound frequency at 110 hertz coming out of the left earphone channel. Here it's 120 coming out of the right earphone channel. So what does that mean? Do the math. If you take 120 and you subtract 110, what's left over is 10. That's 10 hertz, right? And 10 hertz is alpha. So uh, in principle, if a person is listening with headphones to a binaural beat, you can have it drive a 10 hertz carrier frequency that the person's brain will tend to synchronize with. The same principle occurs in mono, except the only difference really, and I've chosen different, um, I'm sorry, I, I've chosen different frequencies, but the only difference really is that they are in both speakers. But we're still dealing with a difference, and I've programmed it still to be a difference. This is 138, so to be a difference of 10 hertz once again. I'm going to explain why I choose 110 hertz in the other one and 138 hertz in this one. But you can see here from the math that it ends up being 10 hertz regardless. Okay, same thing is happening, but one is happening with headphones, and in the monorail beats, it's happening without headphones. It's just creating a, a vibratory warble, <laughs> right, of 10 hertz. Okay, so why this frequency? As you'll notice in the manual on lesson five, uh, we have a table here that tells you that this frequency is the note C. So it's a musical tuning. This is why you can choose these hertz. And here's a table that'll teach you how. All right, well, let's get a little bit more developed here. I've got already started um, removing these, so it's not a simple enable. Now we can have it enable. Let's see, I'm not going to have it enable when I'm in the state. I'm going to have it enable when I'm not in the state. So I'll connect my passing into the not function, meaning to say that when not passing, enable the binaural beats. That's pretty neat, huh? And you can start building some fairly sophisticated functions with very little effort. And we can also do some volume variable. Notice that I used the ratio output. Why? Because the ratio output then is makes it a nice even scale. Um, from 0 to 1 would be, 0 would be the signal is at the threshold, and 1 it would be it's 100% over the threshold as compared to the threshold, right? And so what I can have here is a volume grading scale, right? Obviously, I have to do it on the other one. And you can do some pretty sophisticated things, like have the right ear go at different volume than the left ear or something like that, depending on what your theory is. What's important here is that you know what these fields do. Uh, but look at that. The relative, look at this last option here. So let's say I want to reduce amplitude. If I want to reduce amplitude, then I just have to invert the 0 and the 1 and the 1 and the 0. OK, because um, <coughs> what BioExplorer allows me to do is to sort of normalize everything with that function. So if not increase, that means if decrease, then invert the relative scale. That way, um, I can be working with, let's say, two bars that are asking the person to increase some frequency, and one bar that's asking to decrease some frequency and my numbers will still be in relation to one another. All right, so that's a pretty simple setup. I think that should get you at least going far enough to ask some intelligent questions. But you know, there are no dumb questions, so <laughs> I'm just messing around here with the volume levels, turning off binaural beats now. You know, this is the basic tools, volumes.